Thank you all. I'll declare the meeting open. Uh, it's good to see you all here. Uh, and we're going to start, as is our usual custom, with the karakia. So if we'll say that all together, please. Whakataka te hao ki te uru. Whakataka te hao ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta. Kia mā tara tara ki tai. Ehi aki ana te atakura. Hei tio, hei huka, hei hauru, ti hei maui. We got there. Well done. Take a seat. Uh, Councillors, as is our usual custom uh, now, we are going to, I'm going to invite uh, the members, representatives of the Wellington Interfaith Council to come up and say a prayer or a blessing for us. Um, Manjeet and James, welcome. Uh, just before you do that, when you sit down, I'm going to just say a, a couple of words too. So James, come on, come on up. Um, James is representing the Baha'i faith, uh, so he, and uh, the, the process that we are going through is that uh, the, those faiths will rotate over the period of a year, and it's all about our being inclusive. Now, councillors, I've already told you this, but I haven't said this uh, publicly other than by way of a press release, but I just wanted to congratulate um, the, the whole of the Wellington Interfaith Council. Um, so there is a, an award, um, which uh, is an annual award. It was first, um, uh, I think, uh, promulgated in 2010 uh, by the, it's called the Global King Abdullah II United Nations World Harmony Week Award. Uh, and there were, this year there were 133 uh, entries in that. And the Wellington Interfaith Council was rated number one. Oh, and I think that is absolutely out. And I, I just want to say that that reflects, I think, the wonderful work that the Wellington Interfaith Council has been doing in bringing faiths together and promoting understanding and promoting harmony. And, you know, after the events that happened in Christchurch in particular two years ago, I think the response which um, was made to that, which was about running running forums, uh, it was a bit that I certainly experienced, the running of forums where different faiths were able to explain their faiths, to demystify their, those faiths, um, and to have you know members of the public come in and enjoy that and also enjoy food and fellowship together. I think that was spectacular, but that is only just one of the many things that you've done. So I just want to say again, well done, well done, well done, and thank you for making, you know, speaking essentially to, to what Wellington is about, which is about community and about celebrating diversity, and that's a fabulous thing. I'll hand it over to you, Manjit and James. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> that award would not have been had it not been for your support. I was just telling Sarah that uh, had you not goaded us into doing things, we would not have got it done. So thank you. We have a unique problem. We are getting a gold medal, we are getting a certificate, but we have no space to hang it. <laughs> we don't know what to do with it yet. So at the next council meeting, we may come back to you to find some space for us. <laughs> yeah? And I think it will be a pleasurable exercise for you. <laughs> yeah? Today, uh, I have James from the Baha'i faith. The Baha'i celebrated Navruz about 10 days ago. Uh, that's their New Year. Uh, so we thought it would be appropriate for him to say the prayer for today. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship and councillors. A key principle of the Baha'i faith is unity and diversity, perhaps the most important principle of all. So I'd just like to read a very small piece and then there's really just a one sentence prayer that uh, you could memorize if you wish. Unity and diversity. Know that the order and perfection of the universe require that existence should appear in countless forms. There must be differences of degrees and stations, of kinds and species, for existence to shine forth with the utmost perfection. Consider the world of created things, how varied and diverse they are in species, yet with one sole origin. All the differences that appear are those of outward form and colour. This diversity of type is apparent throughout the whole of nature. Let us look at the beauty in diversity, the beauty of harmony, and learn a lesson from the vegetable creation. If you behold a garden in which all the plants were the same as to form, colour and perfume, it would not seem beautiful to you at all, but rather monotonous and dull. The garden which is pleasing to the eye and which makes the heart glad is the garden in which are growing side by side flowers of every hue, 
form and perfume, and the joyous contrast of color is what makes for charm and beauty. So it is also with trees. An orchard full of fruit, fruit trees is a delight. So is a plantation planted with many species of shrubs. It is just the diversity and variety that constitutes its charm. Each flower, each tree, each fruit, beside being beautiful in itself, brings out by contrast the qualities of the others and shows to advantage the special loveliness of each and all. God grant that the light of unity may envelop the whole earth. God grant that the light of unity may envelop the whole earth. Baha'u'llah. Thank you. Your Worship, could I just make one announcement before we move back? Um, from about the middle of, uh, of third week of March till about the middle of April, there are a lot of New Year's and celebrations that the interfaith will be doing. Um, we had Navruz, then we had Passover last week. We will be having Easter in the next few days. We'll be having Ramadan starting on the 12th. And then we will have Pesakhi, which is celebrated uh, across India. And we'll have the water festival, Songkarat, which is celebrated in Southeast Asia. We have, uh, in previous years, requested the mayor, except for last year, because of COVID, for a statement and for a video clip to wish and to congratulate the various communities for the celebrations that they're having, the New Year's that they're having. We have made the same request, and if with the council and with the, with the mayor, could we again carry a message back to the communities of uh, greetings and good wishes. It will be a pleasure to do that, Manji. Thank Manji you. and James, thank you very much. Thank you. And you're, you're welcome to stay if you wish. <laughs> uh, welcome to go if you wish as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, councillors, uh, I've got apologies. Now, I'm, because, and I've already forewarned you about this, that the meeting is going to be spread over two days, um, that uh, we have to accept the apologies for the second part of the meeting, um, rather than, I don't think you're departing early this time, uh, this uh, part of the meeting, uh, from the Deputy Mayor uh, and councillors Rush and Foon for early departure. So I'm going to move that count second to Councillor Paul. Cool. <laughs> I'll put that. This is when you look around and go, who am I going to pick? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you were looking this vague direction, which was a dangerous thing. Ready to go with me. Thank, thank you, councillors. Now, under announcements by the mayor, and I've again, I've signalled to you that uh, I'm going to uh, to do this, but I've got I've inveigled um, some helpers in doing this as well because I didn't want you to to listen just to me in doing this. Um, sadly, uh, we have over the last month since the last council meeting lost uh, several prominent Wellingtonians. So when we uh, when it was suggested to me that uh, we do an obituary, I think at that point uh, we only had a couple, uh, and it has sadly expanded to six people uh, who we are going to. Um, uh, uh, say some obituaries for, and they are all people who have contributed significantly in different ways to our city. Uh, and and I think one of the uh, one of the things, and I was looking through when writing a few notes uh, on some of these people, was the determination uh, that they had to make a difference in whichever their chosen area was for the community. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is we, we're going to bounce it around a little bit. Um, uh, Councillor Wolf is going to start us off with the uh, the first one, uh, which is uh, Dick Evans. Uh, and then I will do the second one, which uh, is um, Simon's own mother, uh, Inga Wolf. Uh, then uh, I think we, uh, which was the order we decided there, Simon, uh, that we we're going to do. I think we said Shirley Martin was going to be next. Yeah. yeah. And then um, uh, Nicola is going to do Avril McKinnon. Uh, and then back to you again, Simon, um, and for, um, uh, for Mr. Gray. And then I will fin finish off with Colin Ryder. So, Simon, over to you. Thank you very much, Your Worship, and it, it gives me great honour to um, um, read a little bit and tell you a little bit about um, the three individuals that, that I'll be speaking about. Um, but I just want you to know um, 
that all these people were volunteers. They gave their time freely. Um, they also were involved in a great deal of philanthropy for, for Wellington. And, and above all, um, they did a great deal of um, good work in mentoring others. So their, their legacy is, is um, multifaceted. Um, Dick Evans would be um, well known, and you can see him up, up on the screen, for Evans Drapery, which was the it was a hub of Wellington um, retail back in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. It was a family business. They had about, I think, about five or six different stores. There's still one out in Lower Hutt. Um, Dick um, was a man of, of, of quite some vision. He um, set up the Wellington Rugby Supporters Club um, back in the early 1960s. It was the first um, supporters club of its type in New Zealand. And the way that it was set up was that um, it helped um, young people um, who were um, underprivileged get into playing sport, and particularly rugby. Um, it set up events and activities, and, and particularly in welcoming people to Wellington. And, and the, the come on Wellington um, phrase was pre at the absolutely positively Wellington phrase. Everybody used to say, come on Wellington. And, and, and that was Dick. Um, Dick was a character, um, a, a, a very um, solid part of the Wellington community, and he was extremely modest and proud. And uh, during the period that he was in Wellington, um, because he shifted to, to Auckland in his, um, I think in his 80s, um, he was always a very good ambassador and advocate for Wellington, and he contributed greatly to Wellington's vibrancy and vitality. Uh, Andy Leslie, um, the, the former All Black captain, um, recognised um, Dick's contribution recently. Um, he, he, he was, um, and this is Andy's words, he was a wonderful ambassador for Wellington, not only rugby, but the city. He dedicated a huge amount of time and energy to it. Um, I give you um, Dick Evans and I, I, I wish his family and all his friends um, only, only the best. Thanks, Councillor Wolf. Uh, so um, I. I'm privileged and honoured to say a few words about Inga Wolf, um, and I thought it was probably better that I did that than Simon did it. <laughs> um, Inga, of course, is, is Simon's mother, um, and she passed away on the 26th of February, uh, aged 86. Um, she was born in Vienna, um, and uh, they um, obviously this was in the time just leading up to the, um, the Nazi occupation um, of uh, Austria. Uh, they, the family moved to Czechoslovakia and then did a, a pretty daring sort of uh, escape through via Berlin, uh, to fly on holiday, which of course was a one-way trip, they weren't going to intend to come back uh, to to Britain, uh, and thence um, after the war uh, moved to New Zealand in, in the 1950s, 1957. Um, and uh, uh, Inger, I think particularly, we're recognising the, the contribution that she made to uh, not just to Wellington but to New Zealand in terms of the, the foundation of the um, uh, the Holocaust Centre of New Zealand. And she did that following an attack. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking about. Um, tolerance, inclusivity, but she did that following an attack uh, on the Jewish part of the cemetery at Makara in 2004, where uh, graves were smashed and swastikas daubed on those graves. And so Inga, rather than getting um, angry about it, although I'm sure there was a steely determination in there, uh, you know, said that we, we must tell the stories and make sure that we tell those stories so that these things, people recognise what, what happened and that it should never happen again. But sadly, of course, we have seen genocides happen in, you know, in more recent years as well. Um, but uh, she um, was uh, part of establishing the Holocaust Centre uh, in 2007, and she was the, uh, the co-chair uh, co of that. Uh, and it was opened with a simple message, today the lessons of the Holocaust are poignant to combat increasing intolerance and racism, to teach the value of human rights and the celebration of diversity. And I think you know, what we've seen from the Interfaith Council says that that is what we are saying, that is not us. Uh, we do not do that. She also served on the advisory board of the Anne Frank Travelling Exhibition, and I, I know she travelled widely uh, speaking about the lessons of the Holocaust. In other roles, Inga was the Wellington president of the women's business group Zonta, and also served as national president of Arthritis New Zealand, and it was actually in that role uh, that she was given a, um, a QSM uh, in 1992. She was a 2019 finalist in the Women of Influence Awards, a community hero category, and uh, more recently, in fact, twice was a, um, a finalist in the Wellies uh, Awards, again, for community service. Uh, there can be no doubt that Inga Wolf contributed immensely 
uh, not just to our city but also to our nation and I think in bringing that message also to the world and uh, you know I'm honoured to say a few words just to, to recognise her. Simon, back to you again. Um, Your Worship, thank you for the tribute to, to my mother. Um, she is greatly missed, but she's le she also has left a, a, a wonderful full legacy of which um, I'm but one part of it. <laughs> um, I also um, would like to thank um, my council colleagues at this stage for all your messages and, and, and the, the Wellington public as well. Um, it's been a little bit overwhelming, but I, I would like to say on behalf of my sister and I and, and our families that um, the goodwill and the wishes have, have been absolutely appreciated and great, gratefully received. And now I have the um, honour of um, talking a little bit about one of my mum's friends, um, Shirley Martin. And um, Shirley and my mother, um, in a lot of ways, were kindred, kindred spirits, um, fierce resolve and uh, the ability to bring people on board and, and to work um, together for, for common causes. Uh, the headline in, in the um, Dom Post by Nicholas Boyack um, stated, Shirley devoted to keeping Wellington's ambulance service free, and she absolutely did. Um, she had more than she gave more than 60 years service to to, to Wellington Free Ambulance, um, the Laura Ferguson Trust, um, equally, and and when the Mary Potter Hospice was um, founded, Shirley was in there with bo boots and all. There would be few people in the city that would have raised as much money for charities as Shirley Martin. And it's lovely to see um, on the screen her, her husband, Alan Martin. LV Martin was a, a, an iconic business. And um, some of the stories that, that have been told about um, the way that Shirley treated clients of LV Martin, um, we have a, a lot to learn in, in this day about um, how, how we treat people. But Shirley, um, was a leader and an entity in, in her own right. And uh, I was recounting the other day to a friend uh, how if you got an invitation round to Oriental Bay, you knew you were going to get um, warmth, wisdom, fine cuisine, and inevitably there would be a request that you couldn't say no to. And, and it was done in, in the absolute nicest and, and most loveliest way. And aside from being out there on, on street corners raising money for the various charities and especially uh, Wellington Free Ambulance, um, Sh Shirley um, had other methods of being able to, to get people to, to work in a team environment. And, and you know, Wellington Free Ambulance was her passion and you know, she, she achieved greatness with that, and, and that will be her greatest legacy. So I am again honoured to be able to, to um, pay a tribute to another wonderful Wellingtonian. Thanks, Councillor Wolf. Um, Councillor uh, Young, would you like to say a few words about Avenal McKinnon, please? Um, yes, I would. Um of my mother. And, <clears throat> and then became a friend of mine, and then I ended up working with her at the Portrait Gallery. So um, she died recently uh, on March 12th, age 71. Unbelievably, she actually looked um, uh, older than that because she'd been very sick for, very, for many, many years. Um, and it was always amazing that someone as ill as she, had be, as she was would still carry on like she was a perfectly operational human being at a lot of per to a lot of personal cost to herself. Anyway, she was a prominent art historian. She grew up in... Christchurch is a member of the very wealthy um, Goff family. Uh, always help us to, if you wanted to collect art, be an heiress. Um, Avenel was particularly well known because she was the founding director of the New Zealand Portrait Gallery, which opened in 2005. She became a director when, according to the gallery, the founding trust had no physical gallery, a collection of only six artworks, no computers, and no assured funding. Avenel sorted that out. But she was very much hands-on uh, at her funeral someone was saying that he was driving down well, one of the keys and looked up to see this little woman, because she was quite small, at the top of a ladder on the roof of the building, cleaning the roof on a Sunday. That was Avenon. Um, so anyway, she, she was, uh, they moved into the Shed 11 in 2010. Uh, and then Avenon retired. Uh, we, some of you may have met her if you've been to Beijing on any official trips, because her husband, John McKinnon, was our ambassador. 
there. Um, anyway, when she retired um, in 2014, December, the gallery had, in its own words, established itself as a fully professional national body with a permanent home in the Heritage Building on Wellington Waterfront, thanks to the City Council. Uh, exhibitions in demand from regional galleries and museums, a collection of over 200 works, and growing recognition and respect from the wider sector and public. Avenal nurtured and encouraged the careers of many artists, particularly portrait painters, discovered lost portraits for display or acquisition, created a program of exciting and innovative exhibitions, and built a network of loyal supporters, private donors, and institutional funders. Um, she had a huge funeral in Karori. Uh, if you're going to have a big funeral, pick a bigger church. Um, or get a better sound system. But it was a lovely, it was a really lovely funeral. Um, Avenal was made a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2015 for services to the arts and will be hugely missed by the arts community in Wellington. A lovely, gracious, big... Thank you very much, Nicola. Um, and back to you, uh, Simon. Uh, let's talk about um, Neil Gray. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that, that these people that we're, we're paying tribute today all, all knew each other as well. So it's, um, um, again, with a, a, a lot of um, honour that that um, I pay tribute to probably the shyest of, of the, the group. Um, all these people are hum, humble and modest that I've talked about, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I, I um, you know, the others were equally so. But Neil Gray was very shy. He was a, a, a quiet achiever, and it's it's no the, the, he should be recognised in a in a similar sort of way, in, in that he he did achieve a lot for for, for Wellington, and particularly as a, an arts administrator in both the performing and visual arts. Uh, he was also one of the, the sharpest legal minds that this country's ever produced, and and he. Um, gave off his time and energy and expertise freely, pro bono, um, the, 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 the length and breadth of, of what he, he did um, in respect of being the inaugural ch chairman of the, the Theatre Arts Trust, the legal advisor to Toy Fakare, um, Circa and Bats Theatre are included in that. And uh, he was honoured um, in, in 2015 um, for his contributions to, to um, theatre arts. He was also a um, finalist in the Wellingtonian of the Year Awards. And uh, he, was, he was an amazing man with his wife, um, Tia Huya, who um, contributed. They, they were a, a fantastic tag team. Um, and, and Tia also contributed to, this, to the city in, in, an, in amazingly different ways in welcoming people um, here to, um, to, to Wellington. Um, she worked for the council. And, and Neil was that solid force right behind. Their legacy, Neil and, and Tia, um, is not in just um, being a patron or patrons of the art and contributing themselves, but their five kids all of whom are high achievers, all of whom um, have um, achieved things for Wellington uh, in, 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 in many, many ways. And I, and I think that um, I'd just like to, to end um, in, in just acknowledging that, that um, Neil and the Gray family in, in particular have contributed to so much to Wellington and, and largely in a, in a voluntary capacity and also with, with mentoring um, lots of people and especially our youth. Thank you. You're right. Thanks, thanks again, uh, <laughs> Councillor Wolf. Uh, and that brings me to um, the final um, person to mention. Um, on the 9th of March, uh, we lost uh, Colin Ryder. Um, and I was actually sitting just over just over there. You know, we were in the middle of a meeting and uh, got this text come through that said that Colin had had an accident at home. Uh, and um, he said Avenal was um, up a ladder. He was up a ladder, and that was the problem. Uh, he fell off it, and um, so and was died as a result. Um, so uh, that was a real shock. He was uh, 74. Um, Colin, uh, for those of you who knew him, um, was. Uh, 
a person who uh, apps, again showed that, that determination that I think uh, probably is reflected in all of the people that we've just uh, been listening uh, about. He was someone who never took no for an answer. Um, if the first answer was no, it was try and try and try again, and he kept on going. Uh, he was Southland born, resident uh, of Johnsonville. Um, I first uh, came across Colin um, when the, um, the natural Wellington uh, concept was developed by, he was uh, at one stage the chair of Wellington Forest and Bird. Natural Wellington was the concept of, of creating a, a corridor essentially, uh, essentially of, uh, of natural spaces um, across from the Hutt Valley right through into Wellington. Uh, and it, it gave us the blueprint, and it was a blueprint that certainly I and, and other councils were able to adopt to create our outer green belt and the, and the network, uh, which you know we now see around us, which is that that fantastic environmental restoration uh, project. And, and at his funeral the other day, um, he and Jim Lynch, who of course was the, the visionary behind Zelandia, the sanctuary, sanctuary, and Andrew Cutler, who chaired the. Um, uh, the Tapatoranga Marine Reserve, you know, they described themselves as the three musketeers and, and the two the two who were still there spoke. Uh, so Colin um, not only was part of uh, Natural Wellington, he was also the leader in making Mana Island mouse-free. And when they started that project, they thought there were a billion mice on the, on the island and they got rid of them all. Just something quite extraordinary. Uh, for 17 years, he was helped with uh, Jim and Andrew and, and a small band of others, again, working with, you know, fishermen and uh, or fisher people um, to, to sort of get through the concept of a marine reserve on the south on the Wellington south coast uh, and he was also uh, the driving force between behind um, securing Bering Head as a as a um, part of the regional park network mm -hmm. that would definitely not have happened without him uh, he's also worked to protect Miramar's Watts Peninsula I think that's still a work in progress uh, and I, I must say I'd had a, quite a number of conversations with him about about that uh, he was also a leader in the acquisition and reserving of Lot 1 Long Gully. For those of you who know Long Gully at all, it's immediately to the south of uh, Karori Sanctuary, Zealandia, and it is, I think, the largest private reserve piece of land in uh, in our district, uh, certainly in, in, in the Wellington region. Um, Colin, uh, I think um, you mentioned um, Simon fundraising, but uh, at his funeral, uh, he, he said that he'd raised something like $20 million for conservation restoration projects uh, in this city, but in fact the estimate is probably nearer to $30 million. So he has made an absolutely immense difference uh, to conservation and environmental restoration in, uh, in, in Wellington and also in this region, and he's going to be missed immensely. Personally, I'll miss him, but uh, I think he will be missed immensely by the conservation movement here. Uh, councillors, thank you for your attention to all of uh, those um, messages. I think that all of those people, what it does remind us is that um, whatever we do, we, we build on, the, we, you know, we stand on the shoulders of others, and sometimes we've rubbed shoulders with those people as they've done the work that they've done. And I'd like to ask you all if just to stand for a, a few moments just to recognise uh, all of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I go from the very significant to the possibly less significant, but are there any conflict of interest declarations? I don't see any. Confirmation of the minutes. Uh, I'm going to move that we approve the minutes of the council meeting held 24th of February, which have been circulated, taken as read, uh, seconded by Councillor Sparrow's look in my direction, so uh, seconded by <laughs> Councillor Sparrow. Any discussion? I don't see any. If you can vote, please. Okay, there are no items not on the agenda. There are no requests for public participation. In terms of the order of business, and I'm going to speak to the, the last of those, but again, that's been signalled to you, we're going to change the order uh, so that the long-term plan consultation, it goes last, and uh, we'll obviously explain that publicly in, in a moment, uh, or at least at the end of the, the, the meeting. Um, so first of all, we have item 2.1, proposed road closure. Over to Councillor Sparrow. Yes, well, after those um, wonderful tributes to great Wellingtonians, it is very much back to um, the ordinary but important running of the city. According to the um, Dominion Post's advance report on this meeting, and sadly I don't see any um, representatives here, 
They could be, yes, but they're not here in person. Anyway, according to the Dominion Post, councillors will arrive from all over Wellington, some from as far afield as Tawa. Well, actually, actually I added that bit. But will arrive from all over Wellington to essentially discuss one road closure before adjourning. Well, as we well know, this meeting is um, comprises a lot more than that. It's been very special. But now that we've travelled here from all over Wellington, we are making the most of the occasion, so here we go. <laughs> the Newtown Festival Street Fair. Right, okay. It's the biggest, this won't take long, the biggest annual street fair and free musical festival in New Zealand with around 450 stalls plus live music. And it was scheduled to be held earlier this month on Sunday the 8th of March to be precise, but a move to COVID alert level two for a few days around that time meant the event had to be postponed. The Regulatory Processes Committee had actually agreed way back in June 2020 to the requested road closures for earlier this month. So the rescheduled date for the festival is Sunday the 11th of April and as the next regs meeting isn't till Wednesday the 14th of April, this is the only opportunity for us to agree to the road closure for the revised date. So as this is a repeat event, and it's been going many years and no objections have been received to the proposed road closures, I move that we agree to recommendations one, two and three in this report, and I believe they're going to be seconded by Deputy Mayor Free. Thanks, Mr. Sparrow. Um, we've noted that, in fact, because there is nothing um, uh, actually to say which um, actual event this is for, uh, that what we're going to do is, uh, with your collective forbearance, uh, to mention the word Newtown Festival in there, and, and also that the streets are as set out in the, uh, the relevant regs committee report, uh, which we will put on there. So with your forbearance, while um, Haiti um, uh, puts that into the... Um, into the recommendations. Councillor Deputy Mayor Free, do you wish to say anything? Um, very quickly, this is a fantastic event and um, we'll follow on very nicely from Koopa, Koopa Dupa, um, being a, a kind of a, a different sort of event, but one that involves everybody out and celebrating in our public spaces. So I'm very happy to, set, to second this. Councillor Fitzsimons. Yeah, just very briefly, I just want to, um, as a Paikawakawa Southern Ward Councillor, really acknowledge um, Martin and Anna for yep. the amazing amount of work they do with the Newtown Festival every single year. And it's just an iconic event in Wellington that has started the career of many musicians and um, still plays a, an amazing role in our community and it's much loved. So I'm absolutely thrilled that we can, we can do this. Anyone else? Councillor Foon. Um, kia ora, and yes, I think um, just to back up what's being said, but what we witnessed, I am more than happy to help close the roads for this festival, um, because as we saw in the weekend, when you create spaces for people, you get more public life, and that is what Newtown Festival has been doing for its people, and so yes, we're right behind it, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sparrow. Nobody else? You still work on that? I'm going to fill it up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> councillors, um, I'm just uh, going to speak very, very briefly, just while to help Haiti um, actually <laughs> find, find the date of the original paper. We've mislaid the uh, we've mislaid the date of the original paper. Um, so, uh, look, I, I just also wanted to endorse the comments that you made. I mean, the, the work that not only I mean, led by Martin and Anna, um, but also there's a whole massive group of volunteers. I think has been absolutely fantastic. I think, you know, you put. You know, bookend. Uh, so you've got Easter in the middle, but bookending that with Cuba Dupa, which has been absolutely magnificent. I mean, last weekend was absolutely brilliant to see 120 odd thousand people on the Saturday. I don't know how many people there were on the Sunday. I don't know how they measure those, but a heap, a lot of people out there absolutely having a fantastic time, and to see the the creativity um, that gets that's, that was uh, displayed there. But the the um, the organisation that is required to put together an event of that scale is massive. And the Newtown Festival is on that same sort of similar scale. They are massive events. And the fact that we are blessed in Wellington to be able to have those events 
when you look around, the, particularly when you look around the world at the moment, um, is, is um, you know, uh, is quite something to be very, very grateful for. And I also want to just to, to say um, that the fact that, that um, the Newtown Festival has been able to be rescheduled, I think, is when they first said we're in, lock, we're in uh, COVID level two, and it's like, oh no, and the, the cancellation was pushed. I got on the phone straight away and said, hey, can't, can't, can we find, is there another date you can find? They said, we've already worked on that one. So um, that was great. So they weren't giving up on it. And, and I think just about everybody who was um, able to be, wanted to be involved in it, um, you know, on the original date is, is still able to be involved uh, in the state. So all, I think we're all really looking forward to that. And hopefully the sun will be shining and it'll be a wonderful day in Newtown, a wonderful day for Wellington. And, and again, you know, hundreds of thousands of people out there enjoying themselves, which would be fantastic. Heidi, have we got the, the no, date? We the date. Right, okay. Well, <laughs> councillors, we'll plug the date, we'll plug the date into the, into the uh, the meeting, um, it, it's the date of the paper that we're looking for. Yeah, it's the date of the original paper because all the road, all the streets which will be closed will be set out in that. So with your forbearance, with your okay, yeah, yeah, if you're happy with that, okay, right, you're happy. So we've got that set up there. We're going to plug in the word Newtown Festival. It's set out in the report. Cool. Right. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. We will put the vote. Oh, so right of reply. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> right. Well, I'll just say, just um, the original Riggs meeting was actually a Zoom one. The minutes reminded me, and we actually had Martin and Anna uh, on Zoom presenting to us. So they do a wonderful job. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you can now vote. <laughs> Done. Okay. Uh, Councillor O'Neill will move to uh, report 3.1, a new lease on the Wellington Town Belt for Wellington Tennis Incorporated. Thank you, councillors. It is my pleasure to bring the report of the Strategy and Policy Committee meeting of the 18th of March, specifically the, um, the recommendation to grant a new lease to the Wellington Tennis Club on our Town Belt. Um, there was an opportunity for debate at the previous SBC meeting um, and I'm really pleased with the way that officers have presented this report and provided a lot of ample time for us to both have discussions um, about the implications with the town belt and also with the tennis club themselves. Um, really pleased to continue on with this and then just to note that um, any occupation of the town belt will always be in line with the town belt management plan and our other biodiversity strategies as well. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Councillor O'Neill. Seconded by Councillor Wolf. Thank you. Do you wish to speak? Does anyone else wish to speak? Cool. Okay, we'll vote then. Thank you. Now, um, for those who are watching on... Uh, uh, on Zoom, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move into public excluded, at least we're going to propose to move into public excluded. It'll be, I think, a very, very brief item. Um, so uh, if you want to come back in a couple of minutes' time, I'm sure you'll probably be back uh, in the room, and then we will explain what we're going to do in respect of the long-term plan um, and, uh, and how we're going to proceed with that. So, uh, councillors, I'm going to move the recommendation in front of us, which uh, is... Uh, that we pursuant to the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act, etc. Uh, under 4.1, where uh, this is a request to renew the membership of a district licensing committee list member and to appoint a, uh, an additional list member uh, and to protect the privacy of individuals. That's the reason that we propose to go into public excluded, which is uh, uh, clause 72A and the grounds section, section 48-1A. Uh, these, um, the names will be, um, will be made public uh, in very, very short order. Usually they're made public within 24 hours, but it, prevent, it makes sure that we look after people in terms of if somebody wishes to say something about someone that, um, you know, we look after their, uh, their privacy. Uh, so I'm going to move, seconded by Councillor Fitzsimons. Thank you. Any debate? I'll put that.
Oh, Jen, okay, yep, thank you. Yes, yes, indeed. Welcome back, Jen. <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> it's, good, it's good to have an audience. Uh, councillors, um, I'm going to be moving in just a moment to, um, uh, to adjourn the meeting, uh, but I'm going to just say a few words before doing that. Um, because there was an article um, today uh, about the reasons for the adjournment, and um, they, it would be fair to say that the article um, was uh, had a, a few um, things which were not correct in it. Um, so the article suggested that the reason for adjournment was related to Wellington Water's um, uh, information related to Wellington Water. Um, in fact, that's not the case. Uh, the Wellington Water issues have been well signalled and um, are, you know, across multiple councils, uh, actually. Um, uh, the issue, the reason for the delay is, quite simply, it's the complexity of the uh, LTP, I think uh, the Chief Executive has described it, and I would agree with her. This is the most complicated LTP uh, that we have, um, that the Council has had in all the years we've had LTPs. The reason for that is the multiplicity of significant issues that we face all at once, uh, and that is a challenge for the Council, for the City, but is one which I think we've handled well. Um, but it's also that we've included a number of options in most of those, and actually I would see that as a really strong part of an LTP, that we don't just go to our community and say, here is the status quo and here is an option, but actually in many of these cases we've given multiple options, and I think that that is a real plus. Uh, what it has meant though is that the auditors have had to go back and check, you know, all the way back from, if you said this in the document, check all the way back into the document and, um, and satisfy themselves that, uh, that, that they can see where the information, where the statements have come from, where the numbers have come from. Uh, so it is not correct to point the finger at Wellington Water for the audit de delay. It is an issue of the complexity of the work that is being done. Uh, and we are going to, I'm going to move in a moment that we um, adjourn till the, um, till 4 p.m. on th Tuesday the 6th of April. Uh, I've got to do that too, yep. Um, so before I do that though, I have to do one other thing. Uh, so what I've got to do is because the, move, the motion will be to move to adjourn till 4 p.m. on Tuesday. That takes us beyond our six hours. Uh, even though we're not actually meeting, we've still got to do this. So I'm gonna move first of all that uh, as per uh, standing order 11.7, thanks Heidi for uh, making sure I did that in the right order, um, that we continue the meeting uh, beyond the six hour limit. Uh, and so I'm going to look for a seconder for that one. Thank you, Councillor Condi. Uh, so we'll put that one first. Is there any debate on that? No, cool, we'll put that one first. Thank you, thank you. Now, um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that one. I'll do that later on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna move the council now adjourn the meeting until 4 p.m. on Tuesday the 6th of April 2021 in these, in these rooms. Um, is there a seconder for the motion? Councillor Paul, thank you. I'll ask you to vote. Done. Councillors, just before we um, before we uh, adjourn the meeting, and we will stand again to say the karakia. I've just been uh, it's just been suggested to me that I should reflect. I, d I thought I'd done that a little bit in the um, uh, in the. Um, uh, 
comments uh, that were made earlier about the Newtown Festival, but I just wanted to reflect again on the success of Cuba Dupa, mm. um, which I think has been absolutely spectacular. I particularly wanted to acknowledge the the work of Drew James, who's the chair of the uh, the CEO, sorry, of the um, Creative Capital Arts Trust, um, Tim Brown, the chair, um, and uh, Jerry Paul, and I think that the people who put that together, you know, there was 500 artists there, 1,700, uh, sorry. 1,750 artists and 500 acts um, across uh, those two days. I think it was absolutely magnificent. And I also wanted to, re to recognise all the, uh, the the sponsors who helped make that happen. Now, we are a sub substantial sponsor, but um, I wanted to, to recognise all of those sponsors. And I particularly wanted to, a bit of a shout out, um, I was slightly biased on this one, but to the airport company, uh, who of course sponsored uh, one of the main stages there. And uh, you know, uh, given that we are a shareholder of the, the airport company, I, I wanted to, to make that comment. So, councillors. I will ask you to stand for the karakia. Uni here, uni here, uni here, kiti uru tapanui. Kia wātia, kia mama, te nākau, te tīnana, te wairua. I te ara takatū, koe a rā e rongo, whakarea aki ki e ronga. Kia wātia, kia wātia, ai rā. Thank you all. Well done. Kia ora. And, and we'll, see, we'll see you all back for stage two after Easter. And look, can I just wish you all um, a very, very happy Easter as well um, and a, a good, safe and, and restful Easter. I think we probably all need a little bit of a break because it's, this is going to be a lot more to, to deal with uh, in the next, um, you know, the next few weeks. Uh, and the next break, I guess, the substance will be July. So, yeah.